what is it that's so special about this boat? The boat looks beautiful, it sails superbly, and it's got an interesting history. Some of the previous owners were distinguished, and as you row away from it on the mooring, it, give, it gives me great pleasure to look at it every time. So who has owned this boat? It was commissioned by Lord Russell of Liverpool, who was a distinguished soldier and also an, an author. After the war, he was on the War Crimes Tribunal, and he wrote a book called The Scourge of the Swastika. Some of the other owners were Hammond Innes, who gave the boat excellent publicity. While he owned it, he wrote The Wreck of the Mary Deer, and in the preface, he dedicated it to the mate and crew of the Trion of Troy in memory of a gale spent off the Minkies. And another owner was Sir Charles, that's a doctor, Sir Charles Evans, who, climbing with Bordillon, he was in the first successful Everest expedition. He, he was responsible for introducing lightweight oxygen um, to that expedition, and which made it possible. So it, it was entirely accidental that I bought this boat. I, I had never heard of Lawrence Giles or Hammond Innes, and I wasn't even looking for a classic yacht. I had no idea of the significance of long keels or anything really. So when you bought it, what was it? What was it? Was it instantly love, love at first sight? So no, it wasn't love at first sight, but it but gradually became. It, it gradually got its sailing better and better. And um, after I'd replaced the deck and a lot of other things, um, it became easier and easier to sail and to maintain. And so eventually, it, it became a part of my life. Right. When I retired I, 17 years ago, I wanted a project. So I uh, copied this um, pendulum servo gear out of the excellent book by Belcher on wind vane self steering. And this is based entirely on the last chapter in that book. And uh, normally you would set it up, as I've done now, before you leave the mooring, ropes and things. You can. Add the add the pimp add the paddle. There we are. And that goes on there. And that locks it in place when you want to. And uh, so it, it works incredibly well as the slight changes in the wind direction um, you turn the paddle and the paddle then moves over and it only costs about a hundred pounds to make it because really the the paddle is made out of um, a second hand um, pine floorboard and the rest of it was just odd scraps of plywood um, to adjust the direction, you can just turn it like so. So you can make extremely accurate alterations to your course like that. The geometry of it is all explained in the book. But it's incredibly clever because you might think that as it went over, it might sort of keep going and bust. But actually, as it goes over, the geometry is such, it, it then straightens itself out again and uh, it goes up, carries on. And it, it'll even go nicely on a dead run. As, um, I don't normally use the big spinnaker now, as I've got a, a furling one. But um, one year we carried a conventional spinnaker most of the way across the channel just during with this. You need take it off and stow it in its bag but actually um, if it's just sort of being a nuisance and you want a motor or something 
um, that's all right, you can just leave it. And, and, and ideally you could lash that there and then you can motor perfectly well, but there's no urgency to do that. that you, when you're in harbour, you can take everything off and then there's nothing to file up on mooring ropes and things. Excellent. And then also, um, the boat's got such a beautiful transom. I was a bit worried I might be destroying the picture of it, but actually all that, the, 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 the rod that goes up and down, and the, the other bit and the vein just come off very easily. And if you want the rest of it off, it's just a couple of minutes with a screwdriver. Fantastic. Excellent. Right, let's have a look up front. You've got a, something you want to show me up front? Yeah, would you mind putting the uh, wishbone into action? Are you, are you going up there, David? Yeah, in a moment. Um, I think John will just... Uh, I'll take will just take the cover off. Can I talk by doing that? Yes, carry, carry on. Well, it, it's designed to have an eight-foot dinghy stowed on deck. Um, but I think they soon got rid of the boom because it would have hit the dinghy, basically. And the other thing is it would swept low over the fore hatch and been sort of a bit dangerous. Um, Okay. The sun is coming out for us. Yes, but yeah. The, the, the sails that I now have got were made by Peter Saunders at Limington and they're absolutely superb. So since we've got them, they've really gone well. Okay. Okay? okay. Yeah. Excellent. I've been criticised for putting on modern equipment, but I think I'm sure that Lawrence Giles would have used the best and the lightest equipment available. So I don't apologise for setting this modern fore hatch into the original hatch, which leaked appallingly. <laughs> slightly from what was illustrated in the original article um, about 30 years ago in uh, Yachting Monthly. So it, as, a, as it came it used to sort of jam but now I've, the secret is to have it hooking round the forestay instead of impinging on it and that's made a lot of difference and then I've altered the uh, proportions of the wishbone slightly. I copied some of this out of the books by the American designer Bolger. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. It's very effective, isn't it? Oh, it's excellent. And it's very easy to... Originally it was um, just um, attached to a single point, but that it sort of lifted awkwardly like that, and so copying Bolger's designs, I've it's now got a two-point fixing, and you can you can alter it, you can adjust it extremely accurately from the cockpit and even uh, if you watch the speed it's just slight 
alterations can make quite a difference if you're interested in doing that sort of thing. I hear you've got a secret weapon. I have indeed. <laughs> it may be cheating, I'm not quite sure. But I was impressed by the efficiency of the um, foils that aeroplanes have on the tip of their wings. It saves them a whole lot of uh, wing uh, distance. So I I bolted this onto to the top of the uh, mainsail, onto the headboard, and um, well, I've, uh, we appeared to go extremely well when we were using it, but I haven't raced uh, uh, since the uh, uh, regatta that I mentioned, and so I, I can't actually prove that it makes any difference. But psychologically, it was very good. <laughs> so is that a prototype or is that the finished item? This is the finished item, but it could be more elegant, I expect. But this just bolts onto the, onto the headboard and it's as big as I could make it, so it just clears the back stay as you tack. Excellent. So I don't know whether that's entirely legitimate, but ah. it's, it's harmless. <laughs> and, and talking on that, what is she like to sail? It sails now, it sails absolutely beautifully. It's extremely light on the helm. It, 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 if you've got it set up right, it's a, a two-finger job to steer it. And if, it's not, if, if that's not the case, then you've done something wrong. It usually means you've sheeted something in too hard. So it, it's such a pleasure to sail it to windward. It just goes so beautifully. And now you're going to sail her? Yes. Is, I, is, I, is that difficult? Yes, but I'm not well enough to sail it now and um, my my balance has gone a bit and so I, I don't feel safe.